Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. Wherever you were, it's a blessing to have this beautiful day in which God dwells. Even the existence of the day is caused by God. We won't see any day without God. Remember God, a father, is the source. So, if he's the source of all, that means what we see cannot exist if he doesn't have any source. So, the source of all is God and even this day itself is connected in God so when God is in the day the day is supposed to obey him you see everything was created for a purpose you study in uh, Colossians chapter 1 and uh, throughout that chapter you realize that all things were created and they were created for him so if the maker the creator the manufacturer of something has created or manufactured something there is a purpose there is an intent before he engaged into creation that means there's a desire whatever the desire is whatever what you create will serve that desire, will serve that purpose or intent. In other words, we put it this way, it is to serve him. Even the day is supposed to serve God. Well, now understand this, that the gospel reveals us the love of God towards us and uh, reveals us the uniqueness of man in the sack of his creation and how he by love chose to share himself with us and uh, gave us authority over all that whatever that is serving him may serve us as well and that's why we now understand that even the day we are supposed to serve God is supposed to serve us as well because we are now one with the one who created the day. You see, that's where we get all the blessings and the favor. It's, it's not by what we do. It's not what we are trying to, to do. It's what he did, but we have to understand what he did. And uh, we carefully take advantage of all that belongs to us. That's what Paul will say when uh, addressing to Philemon. And he said, Philemon, Verse 6, it says that the effective communication of your faith may be effectual. You know, that the communication of your faith may be effectual by acknowledging all good things that is in you in Christ Jesus. So all good things that are in us, in, in us in Christ Jesus. We, we have to look 
unto these things one after the other and uh, take advantage of them. So we we understand that, well, it's not about what we're doing, it's about understanding, acknowledging what he did. Well, and then that's the good news. The good news is acknowledging the acknowledging God, acknowledging Christ, acknowledging his work, his love, his favor, everything but pertaining to him. Otherwise, men will try to establish what they cannot establish or try to recreate what is already there and that's painful that's the struggle every struggle begins uh, from not knowing the truth see what if if the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free what if the struggles every struggle and the pain and the wounds are all originating from ignoring the truth so we suffer because of what we don't know or we suffer because what we don't is is what we know is wrong have you ever considered the beauty of knowing the truth do you know the freedom that you get from knowing the truth well what if all these things happen because there are things we don't know or we're supposed to know and the moment we get to know them we will be free or be fulfilled there are wounds that will disappear by knowing the truth glory to god and every time you don't know the truth you continue to suffer yourself you you struggle whether you want it or not you're struggling because you don't know the truth that's the beauty of knowing the truth so and it's still going on until we discover the truth then we ain't into the rest for instance it talks about entering in the rest how many people are resting? It says fear that you may probably, that one of you might miss out the promise of resting. How many people fear that they might miss the rest, the point, the idea of resting? Not many people. They don't even care. Well, resting, all this is because we don't know. Well, again, that's why wisdom is all so important. We're talking about the wisdom of God and discovering the wisdom of God, you realize how much you're loved. In the wisdom of God, you understand the longevity, the eternity that God wanted us to everlast, to live everlasting. Why? To live an everlasting life. Why? Because wisdom itself is everlasting. If wisdom is everlasting, then what it can only offer is what it possesses. It possess what? Everlasting life. So it will give you everlasting life. So, and that's why uh, the last time I was were reading, um, in verse, chapter 8, verse, Proverbs 8, verse 27, when he prepared, when he prepared the heavens, I was there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he, now, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, I a little bit talked about the mystery of the circle. And the circle means um, eternity. There's no beginning and there's no end. And I said, look at the sun, for instance. How old is the sun? And yet all these things we, we have been seeing ever since we we were aware of the universal nature these things were there and even those who came before us told us that the sun was there and it seemed that the sun is eternal right and uh, but yet what we discover in the word is that all these things these things are supposed to be inferior to men so if these things are living for that long it can give you the hint the idea of how much of of the purpose and the intent of god man was supposed to live eternally and if all these things are under him then why is it that man will die and these things will last for that long well it shows you that man should awaken should wake up to the reality of his uh, purpose or intent or identity or the reason of his existence 
Well, and, and again, this the beauty of truth. Knowing the truth will set us free. This is this is a fact. Glory to God. It will set us free. It will set us free. Knowing the truth will set us free. That is a fact. And nobody will change it. Well, look at this verse. Um, 28 says, When he established, right? When he established... When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. So he's talking about the building, the establishing of the clouds above, and also strengthening the fountains of the deep. Have you seen different fountains in the ground? on the earth in many places that through those fountains water comes out and gushes all the time and they create you know lakes and then later on see um, the seas and, 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 and many other uh, form of waters well this is God who established, who strengthened the fountains of the deep. And he also established the clouds above. So everything we're seeing is creation. Now, he's saying whether we're talking about the waters in the deep, the fountains in the deep, or the clouds in above, wisdom created all this. It creates things that are deep and above in at any dimension, wisdom is doing the work. It's showing us the uniqueness and the difference uh, of, of what? Of, of wisdom. 29 says, when he is assigned to the sea, it's the limit. My goodness. So he even established when he assigned to the sea, it's the limit. Why is it that you find there's a seashore, there's a limit to a certain city, the sea? Well, it is not limited from there by its own choice. It's limited there by the one who created it. The wisdom is so smart that it knows where this is supposed to begin from and where it's supposed to end from. And the rest of uh, the space will be occupied by other important things as well. You see the functionality of wisdom in establishing order, in bringing order and uh, the demarcation of things. Well, this is amazing. Wisdom is everything. It's doing a lot of things. Where do things are supposed to begin from? When do you supposed to end certain things? Wisdom is the source. And knowing all this by wisdom, glory to God. He says um, that so that the waters would not transgress his command. So you think the waters are where they are because they have chosen to be there. No, they are under a certain command. There's a command of wisdom. And that's why I'm keep, I keep on seeing how... Uh, people say, you know, this world is going to end, you know, people are destroying it and maybe some other supernatural uh, creation are going to destroy this world and so on and so forth. Well, that is not true. The reason why I know that this is not true is because everything is where it is by the command of the creator. Unless you are insinuating that these people have more powers than the creator and that is an insult to the creator the creator is uh, so smart that you cannot compare him with or by anything you see so by his command everything is where it is because of the command of god the sun is where it is because of the command of god so nothing will change it well only the creator glory to god Glory to God. Shalom, shalom. Wisdom is amazing.